Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. I wanna to talk to you guys today about some upgrades we're making to our backup home power system. If you caught one of our more popular videos, budget-friendly emergency backup home power, it's got about 1.7 million views. If you saw that one, you know that we had an electrician hardwire into the house, a transfer switch, so we can effectively switch from on-grid power to off-grid power with the flip of our switch down in our main panel box down in the basement. And for the last year, we've been relying on that and this generator here to take care of us when the power goes out. Now, when you have a video go somewhat viral like that with 1.7 million views and that many people commenting, inevitably you're gonna get some unsolicited advice. Some people are nicer about it than others, but from reading all of the comments, the overarching theme was there's a lot of downsides and dangers to portable gas generators like this. Carburetors gumming up, gas going bad, they're loud, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning and because of the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning you've got to have it outside like I have it here behind me and usually when the power goes out it's weather related so you're going to have your generator out here running in the rain snow or whatever inclement weather cause your power to go out and then you've got to refuel it out in that weather as well. So our solution to all of the problems and dangers presented by portable gas generators when used for backup home power is gonna be this Blue Eddy AC500, which is a 5,000 watt inverter, and these expandable B300 battery packs, which are good for 3,072 kilowatt hours of backup power. Now, full disclosure, Blue Eddy did send these to me to try out here on the channel, but under the condition that I am free to give my honest and unbiased review, opinion, thoughts on the unit, which is actually a condition we have for all of the products we get to test out here on Hometown Acres. Now, like I said, this AC500 is a 5,000 watt pure sign inverter, but it doesn't actually have any uh, battery capacity storage inside this unit alone. It relies on the B300S expandable battery packs to power it. I don't know if you can see, but it's all plug and play on the side. So this one plugs into this one, and then this one plugs into this one, and you can add up to six B300Ss. Now, like I said, each one of the battery packs is 3,072 kilowatt hours, and Blue Eddy on their website states that each one of these should be good for about one day's worth of backup home power. That's all gonna be dependent on the size of your home and the appliances that you are using. These batteries are lithium iron phosphate rated for up to 3,500 recharge cycles at 80% of their original battery capacity. So if you were to use these and recharge them every single day, and you take 3,500 divided by 365 days in a year, you'd come up just shy of 10 years that these batteries should last. So with these two B300 batteries here, we should be able to power our home for up to two days. You can recharge them using AC power, solar panels, and 12 volt as well. So if you did have these hooked up to solar panels and you were continuously charging them while you were drawing from them at the same time, you should be able to extend that past the two days. Another nice feature that Blue Eddy thought of is these batteries are self-heating. So they're rated to work in negative four degrees Fahrenheit or negative 20 degrees Celsius. Now let's talk about weight. My 10,000 watt portable gas generator weighs about 214 pounds. It does have wheels and a handle that you can wheel it around. But if I needed to load it into the bed of the pickup truck or something, I would need a buddy to give me a hand or some kind of ramps to get it up there. These do weigh a little bit more than my gas generator in total. I believe the total weight is 234 pounds but it's all completely modular. So I can lift each of these individually. This one weighs 66 pounds and each of the B300Ss weigh 84 pounds. So if I needed to take these on a camping trip or something, I can still load them in the pickup truck by myself. So here's an up close look at what outlets you have available to you. You've got three 20 amp AC outlets there. You've got one 30 amp twist lock outlet. That's what we'll be using to plug into the side of the house. You've got one 30 amp RV hookup. You've got one 50 amp RV hookup, and then you've got some other miscellaneous stuff, 12 volt DC, 24 volt DC, and then you've got some 100 watt uh, USB-C and some 18 watt USB-A outlets there. It also supports wireless charging up on top, and it's got this nice touch screen here that you can go through the menu and look at all the different settings. Um, another thing you should note is to run just a 12 volt DC outlet or some of these USBs on the B300Ss on their own. You actually don't need the inverter to run those. So you could run those three outlets without the inverter. And then here's your charging ports on the side and here's the charging cable that it plugs into. 
And the nice thing about this charging cable is it doesn't have that big brick on it. That's actually built into the inverter itself. And then here is the cables that hook it together. So it has a locking button, so it actually locks in. And then you push this button to pull it out. And you can see what that looks like there. And like I said, they all just route into each other and you can add up to six of the B300Ss to this inverter. Now, I'm not going to get any more technical with the specifications. There's other YouTube channels who know a lot more about electric and backup power than I do. So we're just going to go ahead and plug this thing into the house and actually test it out. All right, so here's where our Blue Eddy battery backup power is going to live. I've got it on a dolly for easy transport if I ever need to move it around. Conveniently located just inside the garage out of the elements and in close proximity to the plug on the outside of the house so that we can use our 30 amp extension cord and hardwire it directly into the circuits in the house. So let's get it hooked up. All right, so now we're down in the basement at the panel box. We're gonna go ahead and flip the main breaker to simulate a power outage. All right, so our power is out. Now that the power is out, we're gonna go ahead and flip our transfer switch. You can see that these two breakers are linked together. So when I kill the main breaker, it's gonna turn on our utility standby breaker. So let's go turn the Blue Eddy on now and see if we've got home backup power. Okay, so we'll go ahead and turn on the B300S battery packs first. And then we'll turn on the inverter. Actually, it looks like the inverter turned on on its own. So it says it's initializing. Okay, so everything is turned on and hooked up to actually supply power to the panel box in the basement. We need to go ahead and turn the AC power on. So right now it says AC off, turn AC on, and it should start pulling juice into the house. It looks like right now we are pulling about 489 watts to the basement. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let this run for a day and live off of this Blue Eddy uh, to simulate a real world power outage, see if we could get by. I think it's really good to do these kind of tests to make sure that you are prepared in the event of an actual outage. It's a lot nicer to find any kinks in the system when you can easily just switch back to regular power than when you have no other option than to figure it out right there on the spot. The other nice thing about this system, like I said before, we've got our power station inside the garage. We can go ahead and close that garage door and not have to worry about any carbon monoxide poisoning and we have our power source well protected from the elements. So we'll catch back up with you guys in 24 hours and see how the batteries are holding up. We have two B300Ss, which according to Blue Eddy should be good for two days of backup home power, but I'll be curious after 24 hours whether we are over 50% remaining or less than 50% remaining. That'll be the real test. So we'll check back soon. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours now. Let's go ahead and check on the batteries and see where we stand. Again, big pro to this is having it inside and out of the weather. So after 24 hours, it looks like we are at about 38% capacity. So while it looks like this two B300S battery packs would not power our house for two days, that's not to say that it wouldn't power yours. Uh, we may just use more power than the average person that Blue Eddy based those stats on. I came out here and checked it a couple different times to see how much power we were drawing. And it fluctuated widely from anywhere from 200 watts when we weren't really doing a whole lot to over 3000 watts when we were uh, running our well pump, a microwave, and some other lights and things. So it really just depends on how conscious you are about the power that you're drawing, how long you'd be able to make those batteries last. But this was a really eye-opening experience for us. Anybody that has a backup home power system, I highly recommend testing your system. And I don't just mean turning it on for 10 minutes and making sure that what you want to have powered is powered. I actually mean living with your backup home power, living off of it for 24 to 48 hours because it's gonna expose you to your blind spots. Uh, like I said in the past, we had, we had run our transfer switch for 10 minutes. Yep, our fridges work, our well pump works, our freezers work, um, all of our really essential items work, but we never actually took the time to live with that power and it showed us that things like our stove was not hooked up to our transfer switch, our washer and dryer, our garage door openers, the outlet that our Wi-Fi router plugs into, all were not hooked up to our essential circuits in our transfer switch, 
And so those were things that we uncovered that it would be really nice to have them powered uh, in the event of a power outage, but we just didn't have access to them. So it was really eye-opening to us. When I was doing research on how I wanted to do our backup home power, it really came down to two options, the transfer switch and the interlock system. The benefits of the transfer switch is you predetermine what your essential circuits are gonna be in an emergency power outage situation. You put those in a separate box and then you just flip a switch to go from grid power to your backup utility standby power. And so in terms of operating it during an outage, it's really easy. It's one flip of a switch, plug your generator in, you're good to go. The downsides is you're limited to just those circuits that you picked out for emergency power. So in the event that we wanted to run our stove or turn on our Wi-Fi or something, there's no way to turn those things on. Now the interlock system, on the other hand, the switch is baked into your main panel box. So you have access to every panel or every circuit in your panel box the downside is it's very easy to overload your generator. Uh, so you have to be a little bit more diligent on going and turning breakers off that you're not using. And so it's a little less convenient in the event of a power outage to go down there all the time to your panel box and you know turn the stove on and turn your well pump off and then switch them back. But the benefit to that is it gives you the flexibility to run anything in the house. You just have to be mindful to not run too much of the same thing all at once. But I do think after living with the transfer switch for 24 hours, I think I would rather have the flexibility that the interlock system provides. So I think we're actually gonna switch to the interlock system. Now, enough about that. Let's talk about this Blue Eddy. Let's talk about the pros and cons. So I already mentioned the one of the biggest pros is there's no maintenance. You push a button and the generator turns on. You don't have to worry about your carburetors getting gummed up after sitting for two years of no use. You don't have to worry about gas going bad. You push the button and it turns on. So in that sense, I think it's much more reliable and there's no maintenance to do. I also mentioned this, you can keep it indoors so you don't have to worry about going out and refueling it in cold or inclement weather or when it's raining or windy or whatever. You can keep it inside and you don't have to worry about protecting the generator from the elements either. Another pro is that you can simultaneously charge it with solar panels while you're using it. So you can continuously uh, maintain your batteries while you're using it and you don't have to worry about refueling gas cans. Another big pro is that it's completely silent. There is no noise whatsoever. The entire time it was running, I almost forgot a few times that we were running on backup power because there was no hum of a gas engine outside. Now let's talk about the cons. If you don't have solar panels, when you run out of power, you are done. There's no running to the gas station and picking up another 10 gallons of fuel. That's it, you're done. Uh, now, like I said, if you do have solar panels, that would actually be a benefit over the gas generator because on occasion when the power is out and there is a state of emergency, there may be shortages on things like gasoline or there may be a disruption in the natural gas that's buried under underlying to your house. Um, so relying on the sun could sometimes be a benefit over a gas generator. Now, obviously, if you've got two feet of snow, your solar panels aren't going to do anything for you but there are certain situations where the solar panels would be a benefit over relying on uh, public utilities like gas and natural gas. Another thing to consider is they're just not as powerful as gas generators. I mentioned that our generator is a 10,000 watt generator and this Blue Eddy backup home power station with the inverter is a 5,000 watt inverter, which in that market of backup home power stations is on the larger end of what you can buy but in terms of a gas generator, it's more on the small to medium size in terms of actual power output. Another con is that they are more expensive than a gas generator, but that's gonna be for you guys to decide whether that incremental cost is worth it for the pros that I mentioned up above. One thing I won't do is sit here and tell you that this uh, Blue Eddy backup home power station is for everybody, it's not. For some people, it would make sense. For others, a traditional gas generator may make more sense. I just wanted to do this video to show people that there are other options out there besides a traditional gas generator that lets you get away from some of the downsides to having a gas generator. If you guys want to learn more about this Blue Eddy AC500 and the B300S battery packs, I will leave a link down in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.